Merry meet and welcome everyone. This is the Astro Tarot Show and I'm your celestial host, Sharona Rose. And we are already at the end of April going into May. And I wanna talk about all of this energy and what is going on. But first, let me explain what Astro Tarot is. <clears throat> Astro Tarot is an astrology report followed by a tarot reading. And of course, I use the tarot cards and I use oracle cards. I use uh, numerology. I, knew, I use those tools that are available to us. And I discuss our celestial happenings and then I will give a divination reading that will explain how we can work through these energies. I know it's called Astro Tarot because it used to, it just, it just was tarot, but of course I had to add to it, right? Make it a little bit more, I don't know, exciting. <clears throat> so um, this tarot reading explains how we can work through these energies. And this is all going along the concept of as above, so below. Uh, being over 2,000 year, years old, astrology is a vast open um, ocean with much to learn. So with astrology, when we're studying astrology, we're using those upper chakras, we're using um, the throat, the, the third eye, and the crown to connect to the cosmos. And so with our cards, we are going to be using our lower three chakras um, for that tangible tool that we can use to kind of see, uh, physically see how these energies are, um, <clears throat> are playing out. The cards represent that which is tangible. So, of course, these meet in the heart, and this is how I like to um, explain from. So, planets, they're just not rocks that are floating around in space. Um, they have their own frequencies, and, you know, they have their own energy. That's what a frequency is. They have their own type of energy. Each planet, and that, that is including the dwarfs, dwarf planets, stars, etc. All of those, they are alive. Our cosmos is alive. And if you don't believe me, you know, there's there's ancient texts out there that support this. One of those is the Enuma Elish. If you haven't heard of that, try to look that up. Um, also look at our ancient ancestors. They valued spirituality and evolution over um, money and the constant... Um, consumer um, society that we are today, they honored the arts, they honored learning and the evolution of the soul. So, you know, it's just good to, um, in, in this, in these reports and what I deliver to you, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm attempting to show you the highlights of what is going on and how we can work with these energies and cycles um, with, you know, with our world and within ourselves um, to help us on this path and, you know, in this beautiful game called life. So, and it is based on where you are in your life. Um, the planets are here to support you. Um, they're neutral. They're neither good nor bad. So when I say, hey, Mercury is going retrograde, which it is in right now, that doesn't mean it's good or bad. Um, it is our perception of that that changes. So in this show, I will talk about what is going on in our heavens um, and the energy that it will be echoing to us. And um, then I will be giving a tarot reading to see the tangible part. Remember, energy is energies. If our thoughts can create electromagnetic waves that travel into the infinite, um, so too can our, can our planet and the energy that it puts out as well as the other planets. Earth is extremely conscious and this is, um, and I'm actually recording this on Earth Day. So happy Earth Day, everyone. Um, Earth is conscious and just like the rest of the planets and Earth knows how to heal herself. So, and another thing I want to add here is that many people do not know is that our solar system was dropped into the space where it is right now. And 
you see, we are, we, we come from the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy, not to be confused with the Sagittarius um, system, but this is a dwarf, um, the, I'm sorry, the constellation of Sagittarius. Don't get those two confused. So um, basically the Milky Way is merging with the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy. So this is interesting. And if you pinpoint where this, all of this is happening, you can, um, you can see that the Sagittarius dwarf wraps around and intersects. Um, it actually, it shows us being swallowed up by the Milky Way. Um, and that I'm talking about the earth and our planets around us. So, um, you know, we have already, we've already found out that we do have a, a black sun, we are a brown sun, I should say, another, we are a binary um, solar system. So this is just, it's really interesting when we get down and start learning, especially all of the new stuff that's coming out. Um, more and more people are finding out about how the different cycles in our galaxy work, including the Earth. You know, the Earth has a galaxy. Right now, we are going through a warming period, and this has been found through research that they've done. Um, Greenland still has the best place where they can get the ice core samples, so it shows how, you know, it went from the ice age, and it shows the different um, catastrophes that happened and so forth. So. Yeah, cycles do happen, right? And we are in one of them. And one of the cycles that we are in is now Taurus, the sun in inner Taurus. So this is taking us from fire to earth. And we are grounding our passions and our desires. So I want to touch on our last new moon. That was in Aries. And that was the second Aries new moon of the month. And that is... Um, <clears throat> It's very interesting because we normally don't have two Aries new moons. And this is like that tw that uh, 29 degrees. It, it happened at 29 degrees of Aries, which is called the critical degree of any sign, not just Aries. But that 29 degrees of Aries is like, um, I don't have it here. It was um, the 29 degrees is, is about meshing with the music the rhythm of the of the cosmos is about getting in alignment with the cosmos with what we are we are part of a bigger picture and that's one thing we fail to realize sometimes is that there is just there's a bigger picture of things that are going on right now so also the next day and and while we have this new moon mercury was pretty much at a stationary place he wasn't really moving because the next day he turned direct and um you know there wasn't a lot of it it was more of an energy of do it i'm tired of talking it's time to either be or no it's time to it's time to step up or or not or get out of the way so and now he was also at that time having a sextile with mars and that was direct on the 23rd uh, Mars was very dominant there. Um, and this is just carrying on energy um, back and forth between the two because of Mercury first sextiled Mars at the beginning of the month. And that is when Mercury had the upper hand. And now Mars, at this last one, Mars, Mars energy very much dominated that whole area as far as energy is concerned. So we're moving into the energy that is promoting our reality so it's making us really look at what's real and what is grounded so you know at first mercury was going to catch up with uranus going to have that wonderful conjunction but he got real close to him and then he had to go retrograde because he's like you know what no i forgot something um i have to go back so now he is tracking back um, he is in uh, Taurus right now, so he is going backwards a little bit. He won't catch up to Uranus until around June. And Mars is still in Cancer, and he is, uh, we're having a problem here. We can slip, really slip into fear, so we have to be careful with this as long as, um, 
and with with Mercury in um, Mercury is in Taurus, so we can really kind of bury ourselves, bury our heads in the sand, um, and not really want to face things. So also, this is Taurus is very stubborn energy, so they can get. Um, Taurus energy gets really locked and focused and then gets blinders on so they can't see anything else except what they're aiming for we have to be careful for that because it's very stubborn and it and it doesn't give us clear vision of what is truly going on um, it's all about one-sidedness so when mercury turns direct and um, further we get into May uh, we'll be forced to let go what is not true um, so we will be gifted with the um, energy of disillusionment and I see that happening right now with what's going on I can only speak for the United States but I do know what's going you know a little bit about what's going on globally from what I hear and I do see there's a lot of stuff that's turning up especially about um, what was going on um, within our country and another country, say about three and a half years ago. And I also see more things that um, that is being dredged up about the what has went on with our government, about the payoffs and about the, the monies and things like that. So um, we are going to um, begin to be gifted with disillusionment. That is a good thing. But unfortunately, there's some people that will not be able to see because they are so focused on and so attached to an idea. And this is really bad because ideology, ideology um, can be harmful because it, that is one way of restricting your view and preventing you from to see with great clarity that is needed. We need to be able to see these illusions and what is happening and others will still try to cling to that illusion um, the false reality um, is will be will be able to will be forced to see this uh, false reality and I will say that it can be disturbing on many different levels so we have to you know make sure that we're grounded and we need to be grounded into truth we need to be grounded into who we are and to our associates and we can't just um, go with accusations or this that and the other we have to learn how to do our own research and find that truth out for ourselves we can't we have to stop looking outside of ourselves for that truth for that saving and that is something that has been you know programmed into us for a long while now and this is a breaking away of that and it's very hard for some people. Some people like to depend on other other things for their um, choices because number one, that takes their self responsibility away. So anyway, so we are um, we begin this week with the Moon conjunct Mars, which will bring us more um, into our emotions and that we are our foundations are being hit you know um like i've stated our, fir, our first three chakras for the past three years have really been attacked um on the 27th um mars is going to have a, 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 a square with chiron oh my goodness that's hard to say and that can lead us to the, to the potential danger of just letting things happen and not stepping up for ourselves so we really have to watch out for that. The 29th, the moon will be in Virgo, and that will be feeding us some wonderful healing energy and grounding energy, that practical um, energy as Mars uh, perfects that sextile to Uranus. So this is going to urge us to do something about it. So as Virgo is saying, look, we need to be practical. You need to really look at this. Um, we need to take care of this. This is not healthy. So then as Mars sextiles Uranus, Uranus is saying, hey, you need to step up and you need to say something. It's time to step up for yourself now or else it's going to, you're not ever going to be able to do it again. These are these critical, um, that's that critical degree of speaking up and doing something. There's a lot, you know, as I stated in previous, um, in a previous report, 
even as Pluto went into Aquarius, there will still be a struggle of trying to suppress free speech. And we're seeing that played out right now in our government. So um, this is saying that it's time to take a risk and make things happen. That's by the 30th of April. Um, the moon in Virgo will be uh, trying, will be trining the sun, Mercury, and Uranus. And this is bringing the energy back to that Virgo full moon that we had. I believe that was March the 7th. So those planets that are in Taurus um, is going to be it's going to be bringing some very grounded reality to us and a lot of fixed signs have really been hit in the past few months with uh, with some reality checks and with um, with change so I will say that the end of this month will be a bit smoother um, it will have, you know, we'll have a moment of smooth energy, but, um, you know, May is, May is going to be coming in that first week of May was going to bring a lot of change. Now, back on the 20th, the sun moved into the astrological sign of Taurus. And again, that's a shifting of energy, a shifting of power. And that was a shift from um, fire to earth. So we're trying to ground our passions and desires, like I stated previously. And um, on the 20th, um, you know, with the, with the new moon and the solar eclipse, that was the energy that we were waiting for. And the first one on April the 6th was happening at the beginning degrees of the sign. That was urging us to do something that we have never done before, you know, to step up and do that. And... Um, at 16 degrees, that was the that represents the tower card, and it shows a man and woman jumping out of the tower that's in flames, you know, and the lightning bolt hitting the start in the top. So this is hitting our what we thought was right, what we thought was working isn't, and that's messing with our foundation. So it is saying that this what we thought was true and right isn't so it's crumbling down and now something and now it's time to build something new but we have to build it based on truth now based on what has been evident um and it's you know um it's time to take the passions and then ground them into earth and make them a reality to make them manifest we have a lot of changes coming up in may uh, first, I want to cover is Pluto staging, uh, stationing and going retrograde. Um, then we will have the Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse. Yes. And then Mercury will be going direct. So this is a lot of shifting energy. And we start out with um, May 1st, the sun conjunct Mercury. And Mercury is going to be giving us some information that has, he's received from the future. So he's, you know, he's bringing it back to the sun. Um, at the same time, Pluto will be stationing um, to go retrograde at 1.09 p.m., and that is Eastern Time. Guys, all of my stuff is in Eastern Time, and you will have to adjust for your neck of the woods. Uh, then by the 5th, we have that Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse, and that is going to be revealing some hidden emotions that we have. This is also going to show us where we have given our power away and guys we've been given our power away for the past three years to the point it's unbearable um, and it's going to highlight what doesn't work in our lives anymore and this is for the highest good this is what we're shooting for our highest good we are wanting to evolve um so we could see some releasing in this so um this is um this is a time for some final purging and um as well as major power shifts that will occur um and these shifts will start with that full moon lunar eclipse um that is and it's interesting because a full moon is an ending it's a culmination so like um the last new moon in aries was like that second Aries new moon that was like a point of no return and now this is like that final push to where we're cleaning that out it's wanting us to 
release those deepest, darkest secrets. So this could be, we could be seeing some more stuff. Um, Scorpio has to deal with money as well, but it's all, it's about shared money. We could see some more banking stuff come up as well. So the past one and a half years has really been focusing on fixed signs and changing, um, and really, really much about the fixed signs releasing the old and, and they're having to evolve. So what doesn't, what used to work doesn't work anymore. So and this is on a conscious level. So this is basically letting go of what is toxic and what is draining us. Our south node, um, that it represents our past, but it also represents about what is draining us. Um, and what is draining, you know, um, what is keeping us from going forward and stepping fully into our power. So by the 19th um, of May, we'll have that new moon in Taurus, which is going to be a very powerful shift as well. And this is because um, Jupiter moves into the sign of Taurus on May the 16th. And that is really shifting power. So we could have some doors opening for us that were once closed. We could have some new possibilities that could become available to us. And it's all going to be in following in the lines of what we value. Taurus is planet is um, Venus, and this is you know, she's about love and romance, but it's also about our values and our self worth. Um, so, you know, what do we value? In our previous shows, I discussed that, you know, Venus was really calling for us. We have been called to be authentic, to be true, to be, um, to step into our power, but we can't let that be misguided with, um, with, with fantasy and what is not real. It has to be grounded in reality. And we have to look at what we value, not what society tells us that we value or not what these new ideologies tell us that we should value. What do we value? Um, this is very personal. This means in our relationships, our connections, as well as, you know, our, our complete environment. Um, is all of that in alignment with our values? And that is going to be the biggest one. Um, do you know what you what your values are? Um, on the 7th of May, Venus will be moving into the zodiac sign of Cancer at 10.25 a.m. Eastern Time. And this is really going to help us out because it's going to, um, it's going to make us look at the values into the home and into the family and into that structure. Family structure is so important, and um, you can take this back to our indigenous peoples. That structure is so important. Um, our family, our soul tribes, um, you know, that large group of people where our energy, um, like-minded people, I should say, where the energy um is respected that's going to be highlighted within May remember we are focusing on evolving consciously so um, and that many times may not line up with our lower desires so we have to really take a look at that so the Taurus new moon on May 19th at 1153 a.m. will be at 28 degrees of Taurus and again those are those last degrees so those will be very powerful and then he will move into Gemini by 2.48 p.m., again, Eastern Time. So you see that shift. And the next day, Mars will be moving into Leo. Again, that is going to be changing that energy. And Mars will be getting his spark back. He will be entering into a fellow fire sign. So he will be getting his energy back. He In Cancer... He is weakened, but again, it doesn't mean he doesn't have a purpose because there he's defending the home. He's defending the mother. He is defending um, the family and what brings us safety. Um, Mars squaring Chiron can tell us that, you know, that we need to slow down and make some boundaries because we can't move too fast too soon. There's a process. So... That also brings up wounds, uh, Mars square Chiron. 
Um, this could be a week where, and in going into May, where some wounds of your childhood could be highlighted or triggered. This is work that you need to do. Um, a few hours later, um, he will be opposing Pluto, um, which is going to be very interesting energy. And I'll cover more of that when we get on into the month of May. I do want to add that a lunar eclipse that we're going to have on the 5th of May uh, will be opposing Uranus, so we could see some su sudden purging uh, um, happening. So, um, you know, it could be a time where we walk away from things that we never thought that we would walk away from. Again, we are looking at our values and what aligns with our values and, you know, what is in harmony with us and, and where we are wanting to go. Not everybody is wanting to go in the same direction. Um, that's fine, but there's more of us that, you know, um, some of us that want to uh, grow and to evolve into more an enlightenment state. So um, <clears throat> the last new moon on the 20th in Aries, it, it pulled us inside and it wanted us to do some um, self-healing in some examination. It wanted us to assess our values and to get real with ourselves. Remember, Mars was in um, Cancer, so this is, is hitting home. It's hitting family. It's hitting security. And it's also um, hitting mother and nurturing. Um, also, um, the beginning of May, we could see some relationship endings. And by mid-month, um, you can understand why you had to wait, had to walk away from that, because you will um, begin to align with more like-minded people who share you values, and again, that will take you on a different path. Again, and all of this, and all of this um, purging and letting go. Um, we see things differently. We, we, we have a different outlook, a perspective. Um, so we are guided in a different way. And um, there's a bit of different energy that's going on. Um, and these shifts are taking places that they're highlighting and are, um, these shifts that are taking place will be highlighted in our individual power, our values, and that which brings us safety and solidarity, a strong foundation to build upon. Remember that full moons that we're going to be having, um, the full moon that we will be having on the 5th will illuminate. And all full moons will illuminate the shadows, illuminate what's hidden, um, and, and it will illuminate the subconscious as well. And um, the full moon that we did have back on the 7th of March that was in Virgo that I touched on before was all about that purification, all about that cleansing. And, and it was wanting us to get rid of what is toxic to us, what is draining us and making us sick. So we have to take that view and take it inward because we're seeing that a lot of things that we have been taught that we have been um, led to believe was true isn't and that was so important as we get to today because um, Virgo is very connected to the earth to our Pachamama you know and this is a great representation of our bodies okay um, and what was so interesting is that that full moon was conjunct Orcus, the dwarf planet Orcus, and it was located at 13 degrees of Virgo. So um, he is important here because he was the um, he's an Etruscan god of the underworld, and he was the god of divine justice to those who violated sacred law and divine order. He was the punisher of broken oaths. And then Jupiter, and we know him of being this joyous God and, and this good time, but it was his, the Jupiter pillar where the, where oaths were taken by those in charge, by those of power. Um, also, we had um, Ceres that at 25 degrees of Virgo, she is also associated with sacred law and with natural law because she knows every grain 
Ceres is our harvest maiden. She knows every, everything from the macrocosms to the microcosms of everything. So this, she knows the order of that. And then the Libra full moon that we had further pushed law and justice. So, and we can't forget about Eris, who is Aries' sister. She is in Aries and she is stepping up for those who don't have a voice, who has, you know, who has been, um, those who have been unheard, who have been, uh, hushed, silence, and that is really highlighting the divine feminine. So we see a lot of different things that are taking place and shifting more into natural law, natural order, sacred law, divine order. We're seeing that shift into um, us having reality checks and you know, us get, you know, we, we got to stop being as narcissistic as we are as, as a, a species that we can be and see a bigger picture. It's not just about us. We are all connected in this world and we do have individual power and we should empower ourselves and we should listen to ourselves and we should understand that our truths may be different than others and not push them. That's important. That is very important. Um, but we also have to look at the bigger picture and how we fit into that natural law and how we fit into that sacred law, into that natural um, order of how this, how this um, earth works and get into the rhythm and alignment with those cycles. So there's a lot of things happening here and that is just highlight. That is what I'm trying to highlight, trying to help you do is highlight these energies that are so important and what is, what can help us to evolve and to, to get better, to become more enlightened, to become more consciously aware of not only ourselves, but our environment. So that is it for the um, astro tarot, uh, the astrology part of the Astro Tarot Show. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the reading next, and um, we'll see how all of this fits in um, to the manifest world. All right, stay tuned.